Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this section. Uh, so before I start the section, uh, I want to show you a repository, and I want to know like what do you think is missing from the repository, and uh, uh, and we will go from there. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, so you, when you see the repository, what do you see? Uh, oh, yeah. And what, what do you see is missing from the repository? Um, most of people will see is obviously you don't have the readme file of the repository, uh, which, which, we, which the user actually don't really know what the repository is talking about. And, uh, and it's actually not on the main branch, it's actually on the developer branch. Uh, and also, uh, it doesn't have any test files for your service, uh, which is not great. And do we really want to ship this uh, service to the production? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's why it's bring to my talk of the uh, production readiness checks at scale with temporal and temporal schedule. Um, and my name is Siji, uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a systems engineer here uh, in Cloudflare. Um, and uh, for those who are not really familiar with Cloudflare in general, uh, so Cloudflare is a cyber security company and uh, we, our, our goal is to build a better internet. And uh, lots, of, lots of our customers are using uh, Cloudflare for uh, security and the performance purpose for their websites and uh, APIs and applications. And, uh, and also Cloudflare also right now has a developer pr uh, platform as well. Uh, for example, the Cloudflare Worker, which is really popular. And uh, we also have Cloudflare R2, which is the object storage. And uh, we also have Cloudflare D1, which is the, like the serverless uh, data storage uh, in the cloud. Yeah, and uh, so our motivation here is uh, basically we want to make sure your service is uh, production ready and uh, and uh, like uh, to and uh, um, yeah, it's production ready and uh, um, yeah, and uh, and we also want to make sure your service is good for production and uh, it's, uh, and it also has all the CI/CD pipeline set up, for example, and uh, also we also want to help the developers. Uh, to build uh, like uh, better applications uh, to be more production ready uh, to go to the to go to, to go to the production. Uh, so that's why we are building the software excellence dashboard. Uh, so our service excellence dashboard actually is a dashboard that shows your production readiness scores, and um, and it also give you suggestions on what can you improve of your service uh, to become more production ready. Uh, yeah, so there are some difficulty with this. Uh, for example, um, like uh, we have like a thousands of repositories uh, in our in our code repository, and it's really hard to check every repository one by one uh, with a larger instance. Uh, that will be really slow, and uh, it's not really reliable because you only have like one machine. <laughs> um, and also, we also need to make sure the user has. Uh, like when they fix a problem uh, of their code, uh, they should be able to see the updated uh, scores uh, in, their, in their dashboard. Uh, and we also want to make sure uh, like the, the architecture is scalable and uh, resilient uh, to all the failures and such. Um, and also, uh, and another difficulty that we have is uh, for like a, just like a, for a coding repository, uh, you have like uh, lots of operations uh, that can be done on your repository. For, for example, uh, your repository could be renamed to a different name, or your repository could be deleted, or your repository could move to another like projects or organizations. Um, so for our dashboard, we should also be able to handle uh, those situations as well. Um, yeah, and uh, so for the for the requirements is uh, just like I mentioned. Uh, we need to make sure the, the score is refreshed in the dashboard after the user fix it. And uh, we also need to make sure the uh, user actually uh, have, uh, can also can always see the latest score as always. Um, and, also the, and also the user should be also be able to improve on their services on their dashboard. So this is like the high level architecture of uh, how our dashboard works. I will zoom in into the details later, but Overall, we have uh, on the right side, we have uh, like a list of temporal workers uh, that are like deployed in the Kubernetes. Uh, and those workers are just uh, subscribed from uh, events uh, in the temporal, uh, like we are, we are using the temporal like self-hosted version. 
Um, we, we are using like a two, we are started using temporal like around two years ago. So this is like, and the temporal color is not really like a, a thing at that time. Uh, basically the worker will just subscribe the event um, from the temporal uh, server, and then it will call the external dependencies, and then it will store the, like do all the checks of the, of the like the uh, production readiness checks, and then it will store the results into the Postgres database. And then we also have the scheduler on the top side. Uh, I will deep, uh, deep dive more into that later. So the scheduler is the one that actually schedules each repository into the temporal server. And then we also have the temporal API, uh, which is actually um, reading the information from the database and then returns that information back to the user. Yeah, so um, how temporal helps. Uh, so Temporal is really help us uh, in the make, it, make our service really scalable. Uh, and right now, uh, with the help of the Temporal, we are able to horizontally scale the Temporal pods, uh, and, uh, and we will have like, uh, and we have like uh, thousands of pods running in Kubernetes to do those checks. And uh, with the parallelism of the Temporal provides, uh, we are able to um, process all those production readiness checks uh, in less than two hours, rather than uh, like a, like a days <laughs> to process it, and uh, and another and another thing that Temporal provides is uh, out of box error handling. Uh, that I will talk about more on that later. Um, yeah, and also the retries uh, is auto is automatically um, provided as well out of the box. Yeah, so uh, let's dive into the Temporal worker. Uh, so I just, like I just mentioned, the temporal worker is just a, like a list of Kubernetes pod that subscribes uh, from the event of the temporal server and then calling the external dependencies and then store that information into the database. Uh, so this is a sample code on uh, how the temporal worker uh, works. It's basically you create a new client of the temporal worker and then you um, basically uh, configure the parameters of your temporal worker on the like the concurrency values and then basically and then call it start and then it's, uh, and you will just uh, do your thing uh, from the temporal, temporal SDK. Uh, so the concurrency here is a really important, uh, it's an interesting one because some of the production readiness checks are like a really heavy, heavy weight. Like say it runs the unit testing of your service for example and you don't really want to like overload your servers so you want to make sure you set your concurrency uh, not too high. And uh, for some lightweight checks, uh, you, can, you can easily do it, like a really high concurrency. Uh, so basically one pod can process multiple, workflow, uh, multiple workflows at the same time. Yeah, and uh, now we're talking about the temporal scheduler. Uh, so the temporal scheduler, uh, there are several interesting ones here. Uh, so the first one is uh, on the most left one, uh, which is the clean up scheduler. So we actually stores all the history data of your production readiness scores. So we can actually show your uh, production readiness, readiness scores data on the dashboard. Um, so the cleanup scheduler is basically uh, is just to schedule a cleanup job. Basically saying for like really old data, like after two years, you are just clean up, you're just deleted from the database. Uh, and another one interesting is the, uh, is the service scheduler. So the service scheduler is, uh, is what I just mentioned is to detect the repository movements and the repository rename and the deletion of the repositories. And it's uh, um, basically handle the temporal schedules uh, based on the repository state. Uh, and also we have the score scheduler. So the score scheduler is basically uh, to schedule a job that calculates the, like the overall test scores, uh, production readiness scores of your service uh, by collecting all the other production readiness scores. Uh, so, the, so we have another two schedulers uh, which just do what it's supposed to do, like the maintenance scheduler and the configuration scheduler. Uh, those are like, a, for example, they are checking the, if you have a main branch, if you have a readme files, uh, or things like that. Uh, that uh, they will just store that, uh, that scores into the database. Yeah, and uh, so this here is an interesting part one, which is uh, how our uh, temporal scheduler also being scheduled. <laughs> so this is a part of the code of the uh, schedule, uh, is, uh, the service uh, scheduler. Uh, so for this one, uh, so basically we are also, we, we are all of our code are written in Go. Uh, so basically in our code, we are also using GoCorn 
So, so Gokran is like you can, you can define a schedule of your code and then you will run the functions that you define. Uh, so basically what this function does is, is just like on the defined interval, uh, you will basically do, do a scan of all your repository states uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the repository and then, um, and then the temporal schedule will spin up the workflows um, accordingly. Uh, so here's another code is uh, how we handle the repository movement. Uh, yeah, so the happy path is, uh, so we are using the temporal schedule. So the happy path is uh, you, uh, the, ske the service scheduler detects your service, uh, your repository exists. And, uh, and the, the happy path is it will just create the temporal schedule um, uh, as, as, you, as you, what you define. Um, but there is also if your if your scratch if let's say if your repository already exists, uh, then it goes to the uh, unhappy path, which if your schedule already exists, you will do an update of your schedules uh, of your temporal schedules. Uh, and also, um, we also have another workflow that will handle the deletion of your repositories, uh, like uh, to be to be in sync of your uh, what your VCS uh, management system is. Yeah, and uh, so another, uh, the next one is after, after all the schedulers uh, being scheduled uh, we, and uh, all the scores are being calculated, um, we have the API actually reading the information from the database uh, and, then and then respond that uh, to, the, to the dashboard to be shown on the users. Uh, and uh, we also integrated this dashboard into the backstage uh, into our system. So user can directly go to one shop stuff uh, uh, and to see the, all their scores and, uh, there's, and the suggestions of their services use. Yeah, so here is uh, like an overview on what a temporal schedule looks like. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, really easy to look at and you can actually see all the, all the t uh, last runs of your temporal schedules and uh, your next, next schedule the runs of your, of your temporal schedule use. Uh, it's actually a hyperlink, so if you click on the last runs, it actually goes to your workflows uh, that's being scheduled. <laughs> and you can actually see like all your state of your workflows. Yeah, so here is uh, like a, uh, the temporal schedule is like the more advanced version of the temporal cron job. So previously, before, before we have the temporal schedule, uh, temporal only works on the temporal cron job, which you actually cannot really, uh, it's really hard to manage. You cannot really uh, trigger any cron job easily. You can now really see uh, which workflow it belongs to. Uh, so like, uh, if you have uh, like a lot of workflows, that will be really difficult to find. <laughs> uh, so with the rescue of the temporal schedule, you can actually see uh, like how that looks like. Uh, you can easily do a trigger operation or the backfill operation easily. Um, basically, the trigger operation, let's say if you fix a bug of your, of your code, um, and then you don't want to wait for your next schedule to run, right? So you can just do a trigger, and then you will spin up like a new workflow for your, for, uh, for your, work, for your workflow, yeah. And uh, it also has the backfill, which you can actually backfill like a, a time range of uh, workflows, uh, basically to, to spin up like a, all the workflows during that time range. Uh, so previously, uh, we have to do that using the temporal CLI, uh, which is, uh, not really uh, easy to do, and uh, we also have to handle all the automation of the CLI and the such uh, to do just to do just to do the uh, trigger and the backfill operation. But right now, everything is like after after the um, last few updates, we actually have all those uh, uh, operations available on the UI directly. Um, and you also want to be careful on the tr doing the trigger and the backfill operations. Uh, because like for our situation, it's, it's totally okay because we are like a non-mission non critical uh, service. It's just like to calculate the score. But if you are using like, a, if you are doing like the uh, billing jobs, like something involves the transactions and uh, money, then you have to be like more careful. You don't want to like charge the customer multiple times <laughs> in that situation. And uh, you'll, uh, you'll probably want to like, um, make sure your uh, database can handle the rollback uh, properly or, and uh, also do the double locking uh, if needed uh, to make sure the customer is only like a uh, charger bus in those situations. Yeah, and uh, so this is how the uh, temporal error handling looks like. 
Uh, so it's pretty easy to use, and we don't have to configure a lot of stuff. Uh, so for our workflows, we just need to configure what the retrieval error is and what the non-retrieval error is, and also the and also the retry policies uh, and the backup policies, uh, for example. Um, yeah, and, if, uh, and then everything everything else is just handled by the temporal servers directly, and we don't have to manually handle those at all. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is our like a, <laughs> like our uh, final results of our. Um, uh, Server software excellence dashboard looks like, and you can see like you actually have like a lot of uh, if you have like readme files, you have CI/CD pipelines, for example, and uh, you also give you a score like uh, how good your repository is, <laughs> and uh, probably also need some improvements. And uh, if you hover over some of the uh, like uh, question marks on the UI, you actually give you a suggestion, show you uh, saying like what what you could what developer could do. Uh, to improve that. Yeah, so basically the summary is that the temporal has been really helpful to us and it helps us to be like a more horizontal scalable. And uh, also the temporal schedule also is really helpful as well to help to uh, refresh the scores on the defined interval. And uh, we are able to add uh, like uh, additional checks uh, without uh, any like, uh, and we don't have to worry about the like overloading the servers or anything, we can just add in the checks directly. Um, and then temporal will handle the rest of them automatically. Yeah, and uh, that's basically how we use uh, temporal in Cloudflare for the production readiness checks. Um, just want to see any questions <laughs> we have. Thank you.